Hello, everybody. Thank you so much to Chris McKenna for joining us today, uh, who starred in incredible uh, TV programs and, and movies as well. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. Happy to be here. <laughs> Let's start from right the beginning of your career as an actor. Oh, that's really a long time ago. Are you sure you want to go back <laughs> that far? Yeah. Okay. How, how did the passion for acting come about in your life? Uh, I was seven years old and uh, a well, I had already been a singing, dancing little elf of a boy um, who wouldn't shut up. And my parents were like, what do we do with this kid? He won't stop singing. Um, and then a uh, flyer came around school to audition for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, at a local community theater. And I said, uh, Mom, Dad, can I please? And they said, sure. I auditioned and I got cast as Dopey, one of the dwarfs. And my love for acting uh, started then. I had one line. It was, I love you, Snow White. It was the only line I said. It was the last line of the play. The whole crowd goes crazy. And I was like, I'm going to be an actor forever. <laughs> and that's how it began. And uh, among all the incredible roles you had the chance to play so far in your career, is there any particular one that you're mostly fond of? Boy, I, I, that answer is... It has changed throughout the years. I've now been doing this for almost 40 years. Um, I've had many favorite roles. Uh, some, you know, when I did State of Affairs with Katherine Heigl, um, that was a really cool, high profile show, big budget. I got to play the coolest guy in America. I kill all the terrorists and then I sleep with the girl and then I leave. It was very cool. It wasn't my best acting, but man, that was fun. Um, I also like love doing theater. And uh, I did a play called Taste, directed by Stuart Gordon, um, who I've worked with many times. And he, uh, and that play, I play a, um, a, let's say a homosexual, probably autistic, suicidal man um, who wants to be killed and eaten uh, on a date. Um, and it was a dark comedy, very heartfelt. And that I think might've been the best acting I ever did. Much, very few people saw it, except, you know, the people in LA who came to the theater, it won some awards. Um, so that was that was really satisfying um, and very different from playing Nick Vera, the badass CIA agent on uh, State of Affairs. So those are two highlights and very different ends of the spectrum. Um, but, you know, I also love doing comedy as well. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that. And among all these incredible roles, we had the chance to see you on one of I think uh, the most popular um, drama series on, on American television so far, which is Chicago Fire. Chicago Fire, sure. And what's the main element in Keith Bra uh, Bamford's character and the show in general that fascinates you the most and also drew you to, to join Chicago Fire? Um, well, Keith Bamford's an asshole. Uh, that's the main thing. <laughs> Can I say that on your show? Yeah, <laughs> okay. don't worry. <laughs> um, I I have uh, had the opportunity to play quite a few bad guys, especially in the last 10, 15 years. And um, when I saw this role for Keith Bamford, that, there frankly was not a lot there. Um, and I really wanted to make a whole guy, a whole person out of this. Like he was kind of a jerk. And I was like, but this is a jerk who doesn't know he's a jerk. He gets a real kick out of himself. He's a good guy underneath and he just rubs everybody wrong. And I really dug into it and I loved and I, you know, I I sent the tape to Chicago Fire really wanting to to do it. And um, I was given the opportunity. And then they listened to a bunch of the ideas I had and added some things that I wanted to add, which apparently they didn't do very often. Um, and I really enjoyed being a jerk. I know everyone hated me and I I've been hated before. I did 90210 and I played a character everyone hated. I did Good Trouble. I played the DA everyone hated. And I was after like, all, oh, after cool. all, we know that the bad guys are always the best characters around. I mean, yes, <laughs> the best to play. yeah. And the bad guy never thinks he's the bad guy. Um, and so I loved playing that. And I knew I was upsetting people at home. And I, yeah, for sure. I went online and saw everyone hating me. And I was like, I did my job. <laughs> um, yeah, so I love I love playing Keith Bamford. And what's been for you the, the biggest challenge you experienced in portraying Keith Bamford? Yeah, well, it is enduring all the hatred that I'm going to get. <laughs> and I knew I was going to get <laughs> from the fans. Get him out of there. Because I'm insulting their their beloved characters. Um, but, uh, you know, I've 
I've talked to the showrunner who um, said some very nice things to me, the, the head writer, after I left. And uh, we we might be seeing Keith Bamford back next season. And, uh, you know, maybe he'll have a chance to redeem himself. He's not, you know, if you recall. Never say never. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we it hope sounds so. Like One day, of, maybe. Yeah. Um, you know, he's and, you know, he saved a life. He's, he's still a good firefighter and he still yeah. takes his job seriously, even if he rubs everybody wrong. And I wanted that to make sure that and I want to make sure that came through, too, was that uh, he's still good at what he does uh, and he takes it seriously and he wouldn't let anyone down on the job, even if he, you know, is a jerk <laughs> off the job. Which, as you said, it makes him a great firefighter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's a tough job being a firefighter and this is just his coping mechanism. This is how he you know, deals with it. Yeah. Um, we learned from the from the episode that he's got. He's got a divorce. He's in the middle of a divorce. He's got kids. And, you know, he has to go out in this stressful job every day. And, uh, you know, maybe it's not not been great for him mentally. So maybe he needs a therapist or something. But maybe we'll come back next season and uh, he'll redeem himself. I hope so. Yeah. And talking about the environment on the set of Chicago Fire, how would you describe your experience uh, working on that show? And also, do you have any fun anecdotes to share with us from uh, the period of filming? Um, the episodes that Keith was in. Well, um, it's it was really a pleasure. I, I'm not just saying that because you're bringing up that show. It was a rare um, experience. First of all, being on a show that's been on for 11 seasons is unique um, because that that means that they've been running a perfectly oiled machine by then. Everyone knows each other. They clearly get along well. Or they wouldn't be still around after 11 seasons. So it was a really fine-tuned machine um everybody was so warm and wonderful um one thing that's different about a dick wolf show dick wolf is the the creator of that show yeah. and law and order and many other shows is that um he really wants you to say the words in the script no don't go off on your own making different you know making it up on as you know as you go and that's not my style i like to ad-lib a lot um so more than usual like the uh, the script supervisor who's in charge of keeping people on script would come over and everyone would say, that was great. That was wonderful. But could you just say the words in the script, please? <laughs> and they go, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Uh, I thought I did. No, those are not the words. Okay. Um, so that happened more than usual, um, but I didn't mind it. And uh, apparently I was given more leeway than most. Um, but, it, you know, we got to, I, they got to put me through the fire training. Um, you know, I had to get certified with the mask on. Um, I did not appreciate the amount of, work and paraphernalia and how heavy all that fire outfits were. I had no idea it was this difficult, but I had to spend some time, hours going through obstacle courses and wearing all this gear and learning to breathe and not hyperventilate when you're carrying things. And um, boy, that was, uh, you know, I, I just got a little actor course on it and it was already pretty taxing. So I had a, a lot more appreciation for what firefighters have to go through. And there were some real fighter fires in the cast. Um, so, you know, they were helping me out. Um, ah, here's one thing that I never, I, I didn't really appreciate. I had to get out of the fire truck with all the gear on and the big tank on my back. Yeah. And um, on the first day I had to get out of the truck and they had this a, a huge shot. They have three fire trucks pulling in. They have a crane camera. They got 50, 60 extras. They have fire going in the windows and they come right down to me and I get out of the, and my, my tank clips on the door and I fall flat oh. right out of the fire truck flat on my face I dropped six feet bam right on my face um pretty embarrassed uh and I couldn't figure out what happened how that what happened so they're like it's no big deal let's go you know let's know it's all right it happens everyone tried to make me feel better we backed the whole thing up to do it again wouldn't you know I fell flat on my face again <laughs> <laughs> caught it again on the door on the way I kept thinking I was clear and then it catches on the door it's a lot bigger than you think so I, I got a little uh, I was feeling pretty good everyone was telling me I did great in training and better than most actors do and then I fell flat on my face twice in front of all the extras who felt bad for me um, so <laughs> that happened as well but overall it was a wonderful experience great people and uh, I was I really appreciated getting through all that training and learning all about that uh, all the all the gear and the technical stuff, riding in the fire truck, riding through yeah. Chicago streets and the fire truck was fun. So that, I, that was I, I guess that 
what you said i mean the the, the whole training and the the, um, the challenges that the um, the uniforms and the um, objects that firefighters have to to like handle during their work it helps really the audience to understand how hard and how difficult it must be to to like also film in this kind yes. of, uh, of environment <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and they have the burn stage, they call it, where they use real fire and they set fire, you know, and there's all these safety mechanisms, but it gets hot in there and we're yeah. wearing these giant things and you still get burned through them. It isn't can't... as comfortable as it seems from no, television. No, don't realize that thing weighs 70, 80 pounds and yeah. that on your shoulders just for, you know, 10 minutes starts to get tiring and you got to do this running and moving all around for hours um, and then it's hot and it's hard to breathe without the mask um it was uh it was a lot um but that made it all real and that's what makes the show great and uh, i love how seriously they take it so um i really appreciate that and uh, you know and i've done so many things i've been trained you know act i got actor training for cia and for yeah. fbi and for cops on lots of different things um this was a, it was unique it, and i didn't know there were still so many things i had left to learn and left to play as an actor i'd never played a fireman before so uh, I was honored to do that, and that was a lot of fun. Absolutely, and um, uh, with all your your castmates and the other the other actors um, in, among the cast, do you have any anyone in particular that you're you grow most fond of, and you you grew some friendship with? <laughs> well, I mean, he he he'd know it himself, Randy Flagler. Um, you know the uh, the bald guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my character calls him Fester. Um, he really it couldn't be a sweeter guy. Everybody was really sweet, but he goes out of his way um, to make sure the guest stars are, are comfortable. And he really, I spent time with him in the car. Uh, you know, we we lived right next to each other when I was working there, and he was really showing me the ropes. And uh, Randy Flagler was really he's a he's a mensch. He's a heck of a guy, and um, yeah, I I, I really appreciate uh, the effort he goes through. He wouldn't he didn't have to do that. Went went well above and beyond what would have been necessary to make me feel welcome. Um, good guy. Absolutely. And now two little fun questions that we always ask to the people we're interviewing and considering we're talking about Chicago Fire, it's on the Chicago Fire universe. Right, uh, yeah. If you could choose any other character from Chicago Fire apart from Keith that you would have loved to play if you could, which one would it be and why? Oh boy. Um, well, I want to play Severide. I want to play Kelly Severide. Uh, obvious choice. Because <laughs> he's the coolest and sexiest of the whole bunch. Um, so that that's an easy question. And he still gets to do all the fire stuff. Yeah. Um, and get the girl. Um, so, yeah. I mean, Kelly Severide is, uh, is uh, the, the cream of the characters there. Uh, I know I know he's missed right now on the show. Yeah, but, uh, he's missed a lot. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and... Another another little curiosity that we have about your time in the show is that we'd like to know if you take um did you take anything from set to remember your experience any prop or any piece? Oh of gosh, I, I would never have had the balls to steal anything from that set. They have so many people and so many different props. They have the great. I was very tempted to steal one of the foam rubber axes that they used to break down the doors. I was like, they would never miss one but I was gonna have to get in the van on the way home and they would see it. So no, I did not have the opportunity to steal the prop. They got great props though. And there was talk about people trying to steal props, <laughs> but I, I was I had to go home in, in the, the company van and they would have caught me. Yeah. So I would have loved to. I have nothing but the, but the memories. But the memories, which are great. <laughs> yeah. But uh, next time, if they bring me back, I'm stealing something. <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> and another show that you had the chance to to work on so far in your career is Good Trouble, which is the Foster's uh, spin-off series. And yep. you had the chance to to wear uh, to play a character which is Mark Rodman, if I Rothman. get it right. <laughs> Rothman, yeah. District Attorney Mark Rothman. And um, what's yeah. your favorite memory out of that, ex that experience on Good Trouble? Well, I, I have a very clear one. First of all, that was supposed to be a small character, just an episode or two that I was doing during the pandemic. 
and then they expanded it to do more and more and eventually it was 10 episodes that's always fun and uh they got to expand the character but my favorite memory is when i did the closing arguments um for the for the the, the trial that we were having um it was a montage scene between constant simmer's character talking to her to to Maya Mitchell and the other people on the on her team yes. and flashing back to me talking to the jury now in the script they didn't really write me a closing argument she describes what i'm going to say and then they gave me a couple of words and i don't think the writers realized they never gave me anything to to say really so i saw this and i was kind of annoyed by it <laughs> um i was like i'm not going to just say two words and then and they didn't realize it anyway so i decided to write my closing arguments based on what she was describing and i wrote my closing arguments i went that's impressive i mean that, that was all improvised like well, well yeah i mean i had a couple days to practice because i knew it was going to happen on monday and i had friday to monday to oh. figure it out so over the weekend i wrote them all i showed up on i knew we were going to rehearse the scene first so i went to the props person ahead of time and asked for a book because i like, give me a book i want to use a book um they gave me a book and then right at the top when we would start rehearsing, I knew how the, the set worked. I knew I'd get one chance to get this right. And I did my whole closing argument. I found the book. I slammed it on the thing. None of that was in the script. And the jury was was shocked. And everyone was looking around at the scripts like, where did he get this from? They thought that there was some rewrites they missed. And then uh, I turned around to the producer and said, he's got to be good, right? And they ran over and they put it all in the script. And then that all ended up on the trailer and in the episode. And I felt quite happy that that had all worked out the way that's I had quite, planned it. That's quite rewarding, <laughs> I think. Yes, it was. I was like, you write me no words. I'll show you what I'm writing, write them myself. So it's a great, it's a terrific show. And they always wrote me great stuff. This was just a weird montage scene where the writers were thinking about her and didn't realize I had nothing to say. So I took advantage of that time. And I really loved how it came out. And in the trailer, you see me pick up the book and slam it. And I was like, I knew that was going to work. So that's my favorite memory from Good Trouble. <laughs> and Good Trouble, what drew you to this role? I mean, what's the thing that fascinate, fascinated you the most about the show and also the role in the first place? Well, I have been acting for so long and I had played lawyers, but not really in, in the, I had played a character who was a love interest whose job was lawyer. I never was in a, in a on a trial or in, in the room. So I, felt like I had never really played a lawyer. And this role came along and it was kind of a small role and it really was, you know, they were like, you may not want to do this. And I was like, no, it's a district attorney and I'm 40 now <laughs> and I haven't played a lawyer in a courtroom and I love courtroom dramas. So I want to learn how to play a lawyer, a, a one in, in a courtroom, not just a guy in a suit who you say is the lawyer. So I was like, I want the district attorney role. And I got it. Got to work with Constance Zimmer, who was great. Um, and then they expanded the role, and I got to have that experience, I just said. So I felt like I did it. Okay, now I know how to play a district attorney. I can write my own closing arguments. So what I wanted to do was play a lawyer, a real one, because I'm going to be old enough to play lawyers the rest of my career now that I'm <laughs> in this age. And so, you managed uh, to. <laughs> I did. I think I did. Um, so and I, and I got better. I learned as I was doing it. That was, you know, the eighth episode. I got better um, the more I watched myself and didn't like what I saw. So I fixed it. <laughs> and then eventually uh, I liked the district, you know, the evil district attorney Rothman that uh, we came up with. So now I feel like I can play lawyers and district attorneys just fine and uh, no longer have that hole in my resume. Absolutely. And how would you describe your experience filming with the rest of the cast and, and both also working with the crew and, and the writers? I was really impressed. Um, you know, I didn't know the show at the time. Um, and I thought of it as a kid's show, like, you know, from the Fosters. Yeah. Uh, I was so impressed with the actors, um, with Maya Mitchell. Uh, yeah, I didn't know at the time Constance Zimmer was going to be on the show. I knew her and I was I, I was very excited to find out she was there. But I didn't know how talented and hardworking and serious Maya was. Um, and uh, and the other other actors as well. And I can't think of all their names at the moment. Um <laughs> But they were, it was really, I was really impressed, uh, not to be condescending, um, that there was a higher quality show and like, it was not the children's show anymore. Uh, and they did, did a great job on it. And they tackled a lot of issues that uh, I respected. So um, I, at first I thought it was, I was just doing it to learn how to play a lawyer 
or to, you know, or show something to myself. And I didn't know I was getting going to be a part of such a, you know, a forward thinking, progressive, good show. So I was very impressed. And, uh, you know, to find that out. Absolutely. And um, talking about the future, what's next for you? <laughs> what Do you have any upcoming projects that you can share with us? Yeah, I do. Um, I just came back from the Tribeca Film Festival. It's a big uh, film festival in New York. Um, a movie called Suitable Flesh, a horror movie um, wow. starring Heather Graham and Barbara Crampton. Um, that just came out this past weekend. I just got back from New York yesterday. Um, and it, I just saw it and it is hilarious and gruesome and scary uh, and yeah, very funny and sexy. Uh, and I have a, a role in that. It is uh, the director, Joe Lynch, um, is thinking of it as a tribute partially to Stuart Gordon, the writer director of multiple things that I've done, including Taste, that play I mentioned earlier. Yeah. He passed away and he wanted to direct this movie. He didn't get a chance. So I wanted to be a part of it. Um, as, as well as some other Stuart Gordon people. And so I have a funny cameo in that uh, in that movie that I'm, <laughs> I just saw. It was very it was very good. I'm very proud to be a part of that. So Suitable Flesh is coming out soon. That'll be streaming online on Shudder and uh, other places soon. Uh, I also have a series of audio books that I narrate. Um, I have a whole canon of Thomas Tessier books. He's a horror, um, horror author that I'm in the middle of doing all of his canon. Yeah. We have a new one coming out soon called Finishing Touches. That'll be available on Audible. Uh, let's see, what else? That's that's all we have going at the moment for sure. Anything else I would talk about would be irresponsible. <laughs> Then good luck with the whole year of coming projects. <laughs> Appreciate it, yes. I hope to, I, there's a bunch of things in the works uh, that uh, I hope to be able to announce soon. Yeah, let's hope so. And our final question. Mm -hmm. um, That's also another one that we always ask to the people we're interviewing. And uh, if you had the chance to give some advice to young people who wants to pursue an acting career or a career in entertainment in general, may it be a writing career, a directing one, uh, what kind of advice would you give them based on your own experience? Um, there's so many different trite uh, things that I could say. Um, I've been all up and down in my career. I've done this for 38 years. I've been, you know, I've been the biggest star in the world for a minute, had it go away and try to bring it back. Um, I've loved it and I've always loved it. And it's never, I never, there was never a choice of doing anything else, maybe directing, maybe producing, maybe writing, but always in this field. So you have to find something you love about it and something you love about the process and about the journey because loving the destination is not is not going to get you there. If you fly if you're flying with your hand on the eject button, you're never going to get anywhere. So, if you're going to do it and you want to do it, then don't question it and give it all you got. Um that's the only that's the only way. Um you're you're going to you're going to hit bumps in the road, you're going to doubt yourself. I I know some of the most successful actors and directors in the world who did. Um and you're going to have to push through those or they'll stop you. There'll be so many reasons to stop. So love that you're doing it. I, I've loved when I was, you know, making no money at all and doing doing work that I love doing, doing theater that really mattered to me, doing work that I was proud of. And I was happier than times where I was making much more money and much more successful by the from the outside. But I wasn't fulfilled and didn't love it. So find the thing you love about it and do that. And if you don't, do something else. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. It's, really, it's been really great to have you here and to chat with you about your work and your experience and your incredible roles. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And good luck with your upcoming projects. And we can't wait you to see you on something new. Yes, that's right. I can't wait either. I will let you know. And nothing. Thank you so much again and have a good day. Yeah. Bye.